China has identified the cause of the mysterious new virus. Coronavirus. Fiji was one of the world's COVID success stories until an outbreak of the Delta variant in April that's continued to soar. In one day this week, 791 new cases were recorded and three people died. There are currently 6,500 active infections. We know that by having a pandemic preparedness plan, we can help to curb the spread of a new infection. So what can we propose for Fiji? So our main program objectives is to improve accessibility of healthcare to the rural areas of Fiji. And how we're going to do that is we'll be providing a pseudo rapid response team that is mobile. When we look at the statistics, it is shown that the COVID-19 cases spiked from a small number of 109 to a massive number of 65,000. And, and optimistically, up to 1.5 million doses of vaccine has been administered and approximately 81.2% of the population has been fully vaccinated. But if we looked at the economic impact, a remarkable 38% of the GDP has been affected and that is due to a decline in tourism. And if you look at the social impact, there are social measures in place to curb the COVID-19 situation, such as social isolation. But more can definitely be done. So, in order to execute a successful pandemic preparedness plan, we have to ensure that we know who we are trying to target first. The Fiji is an archipelago located in Melanesia, a part of Oceania, and consists of 330 islands, with only 110 of those islands being permanently habitable. The islands of Viti Levu and Vanua Levu hold approximately 87% of the population, with Viti Levu being the larger of the two, and serving as the international gateway to the country, as well as housing the capital, Suva. Fiji's demographics is mainly split between two groups. Native Fijians make up a big por portion of the population, with 57% identifying as such. Indo-Fijians make up another 38% of the population, with this group's history dating back to as far as the 1800s, when the British brought labourers from India during their occupation of the country. Approximately 44.1% of the population resides within rural areas, with the rest in urban areas. And migration from other demographics has meant that the share of the population of Indians and Fijians has decreased overall. However, these groups still retain their dominance. This cultural paradigm is also reflected with religious and language and almost all indigenous Fijians identifying as Mathodist Christians and most Indians being Hindu, with a minority being Muslim. The main language spoken are English, Fijian and Fijian Hindu, with the, with the Fijian language existing in many dialects, the most common being known as Baon Fijian. The country is relatively young, with over 29% of the population being over 15. Just 1.6% of the population live to be 75 years old and over and over, but the country's life expectancy relatively low compared to the Western world at 65 years for males and 70 for women. Fiji's implementation of a free education system has meant that the vast majority of Fiji's youth has some level of education, uh, with primary school en enrollments at 99% and 80% in secondary schools. 36% of men and 40% of women have a secondary qualification, whilst 20% of men and 15% of women have a tertiary qualification. Fiji's economy is mainly based around two industries, tourism and agriculture. Agriculture and manufacturing is somewhat divided between the two major ethnic groups, with Indians mainly responsible for sugarcane production, whilst native Fijians dominate in cultivating copra, cocoa, kava, taro, pineapples and bananas. Fiji, being an island nation, relies heavily on imports from other countries for raw materials and food products that are not available on the island. However, efforts have been made to reduce reliance on importing food overall, especially since during the COVID pandemic, reliance on importation was stretched given the lockdowns from other countries as well as lockdowns in Fiji itself. So we will mainly target the population that resides outside of city centres due to their vulnerability for not having easy access to healthcare services as well as having relatively poor health literacy. This is problematic given that effective communication of recent health advice has been shown to delay the spread of any disease. This community has also been targeted as these areas are also responsible for the country's agricultural industry, which in times where travel is restricted can be an issue in terms of food security if food supplies were to be affected as a result of new infections. 
As we know, Indigenous Fijians can have less access to healthcare facilities, especially those that live in central, remote and underdeveloped regions of Fiji. Without intervention, we would be developing transportable and compact healthcare facilities by repurposing old tour buses and trucks by transforming them into mobile healthcare vehicles. With these vehicles, they will contain rapid and PCR testing resources, access to basic symptomatic treatments and education tools to improve health outcomes. These healthcare vehicles would form a safe and healthy environment for Fijians to seek healthcare advice and treatments, as well as allow for healthcare professionals to actively participate in Indigenous health. Especially during a pandemic, these healthcare vehicles can provide healthcare consultations, screening, assessments and education to Indigenous regions where the healthcare is lacking. These transportable vehicles can form the interconnected healthcare network system to allow for faster communication and better access to healthcare treatment facilities in the indigenous and rural regions. With this intervention, we hope to improve healthcare outcomes and the health literacy of people in remote regions of Fiji where disparities in healthcare access is present. During a pandemic, the network of portable healthcare facilities will ensure adequate healthcare is provided to Fijians by ensuring prompt delivery of screening kits, diagnostic tools, treatment products, as well as access healthcare information to improve the overall healthcare outcome of remote Fijians. Phase one lasting for three months, we will repurpose the vehicle, procure relevant supplies, distribute information, and market the volunteer program. In phase two, we will implement the intervention within rural communities, and we will also assess the population statistics. And finally, in phase three, we seek to conduct a program evaluation. Let's take a look at the budget based on having eight repurposed vehicles initially. We plan the budget based on three areas. First one being the cost to repurpose vehicles. It will cost about $1,100 to install solar panels onto each vehicle. Medical supplies to be carried within each vehicle will have the cost listed in the table, which includes blood pressure machine, pulse oximeter, oxygen machine, medications such as analgesics, antibiotics, first aid kit, examination bed, and miscellaneous cost for hygiene maintenance. Installing satellites and communication devices in each vehicle will then cost around $1,100. Next area is human resources. We first plan to advertise our program via newspaper and public notice board, to which will cost $400 per month. Then through advertisement, we also aim to educate and inform the target population of our program. We have estimated about $25,000 per person to accommodate the volunteers while they participate in our program. Last area is maintenance cost. By looking at estimated fuel costs in 2022, we allocated about $17,600 in total for transportation cost, with vehicle maintenance cost about $4,000 in total. So in total, we have only used up about $191,880, leaving about $10,000 left in our budget. We aim to use the remaining money to cover any additional costs, such as human resources, equipment replacement, and purchase of any additional supplies. And so to conclude, our target populations comprises of Fijians that reside outside of city centres due to their vulnerability for not having easy access to healthcare services, as well as their relatively poor health literacy. And so we propose our intervention, which is to develop a transportable and compact health facility by repurposing old tour buses and trucks and transform them into healthcare vehicles that are mobile. And within each vehicle, there will be rapid PCR testing resources, and we also aim to have healthcare consultations comprising of screening, assessment, and education to the Fijians who are in their indigenous rural areas. And so ultimately, we aim to have an interconnected healthcare network system to allow for faster communication and better access to healthcare screening, as well as assessment for treatment. So we've done the math. It is affordable. Repurposing eight vehicles with the inclusion of medical supplies come up to a total of approximately 35,000. Advertisements for recruitment of manpower for that has been budgeted to about 9,600 for two years. And also we have accommodations for participants that come up to 125,000. And then ma maintenance of vehicles at 21,000. And so the total estimated all comes to approximately 190,000. And so with everything in mind, we are highly optimistic in the practicality and feasibility of our proposed intervention. Not only does it seek to provide a rapid response for healthcare to the inaccessible areas, but we also believe that this is the first step 
in ensuring equitable healthcare in rural settings.